Okay, guys, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite NW episodes. So, my, fa- uh, my 10th favorite NW episode is Los Angeles Qualifying 2018. I'm reading this off my phone, so that's kind of what I'm doing that off my phone. So, anyways, L- so in number 10th is uh, Los Angeles Qualifying Season 10. Um, I actually like it because I think I like how many, you know, runs that they were able to show in, in the edit. Um, as well as kind of being shocking as far as the results. Because it's like you get that. I think, it, again, a lot of these episodes have that good ratio that needs to be there of shocking falls, but also, you know, amazing, un, you know, surprising triumphs. You know, I love it. I, I love, you know, seeing Flip and Adam around, Grant McCartney, and Kevin Bowen, Sean Bryan, Tiana Weberly. You know, it's it's a hu- it's a who's who of Ninja Greats, Nick Hansen, and, you know, all of them. It's, it's great to see, and, like, how somehow you can have some of the best ninjas competing in this region all shown, and yet you still have these new faces like Brian Rambo and Thomas Coughlin. You know, surprised surprise everyone as well. It's all impressive. It really is. Um, if we'll be honest here. Um, I just love it. I think it's one of my favorites, especially, you know, when the, being able to watch it live. It's, a, it's always a great experience when you are able to do that. I think the course is really cool. I mean, it being, uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it, I mean, there's, that's Jurassic World, mine, it was great. I mean, I don't think like, the Jurassic World promotion is as bad as the Secret Life is, of Pets promotion as far as taking up most of the episode. But nonetheless, I think it was some, it was one of those things where it was like, it was cool, but I didn't really care for it. But I still love the episode. I love, you know, there's just so many shocking moments with Ken Bowl and Flip and Grant all going out on the donut drop. And, Sean, seeing Sean, yet yeah, having Sean Bryan, Adam Rail have successes. So you have, again, that good ratio between success and failure. That, that's, a, that's, you know, exciting to see. Um, number ninth, mm-hmm. uh, in ninth place, Minneapolis qualifying, uh, season 10. Another season 10 qualifying episode. I think season 10 has some really good qualifying episodes. I think with Minneapolis, I think it's a similar situation. I think I, I like the course. I like I like seeing the surprise of Abby Clark and seeing um, Anadina Stenger come, especially because like, you see her grow through the sidelines and cheering on Michael and going from the wheelchair to realizing that her kids have her disease, to be able to walk on the sidelines, to be able to compete. Yeah, that was a great story. So it's like you get these kind of new faces like Abby Clark and Anna Dina Stanger, but yet again, you still have great veterans like Joan Roski crushed the course. Jake Murray's return. Lance Peake is doing good. Maggie Martin's shocking fall. So this just had it all compiled into an episode with a good course. Um, it'll just show just a lot of good runs and I was shocked when Austin Gray missed both the Mega Ball and the Wedro Warp Ball. So it had a, a good mix of everything you really want from an episode. Um, eighth place is Vegas Night 4 Season 11. So this is stage 2 and stage, or stage 3 and stage 4 of a 11. It is my, what did I say it was? It was my eighth favorite NW episode. I think why it's, why it's really one of my favorites is obviously Drew Dreschel is my favorite ninja. <clears throat> and seeing him dominate stage three and stage four and ultimately winning, like, that was epic. And I think, I, I love the course. I love seeing so many ninjas tackle stage. Like, I, not this amount of ninjas tackling stage three, but it was great to just see how difficult stage three was. Because for a lot, for many years, I didn't, it's like hard to really tell how difficult stage three is because all you know is eh, it's just a just five ninjas compete each season at the very most majority of the time most of the time it's like three or two 
seen 21 ninjas tackle stage 3 and only two of them succeeding. It just goes to show the difficulty of stage 3, which only makes me appreciate so much more what Daniel Gill and Drew Jessel were able to do. And they showed, again, show, like, they only showed 12 ninjas, but, I mean, stage 3 is stage 3, and it's crazy how, even then, how much they could have, they were able to show. And seeing Adam Rail come so close, and Joe Murawski come so close, and Lucas Reale, and... Tyler Gillette and Kevin Carbone all coming, all seeing them come so close it is, is truly crazy when they don't make it. Um, but it, it was just on the edge of my seat the whole time. You know, could Daniel do it? Could Drew do it? Then Drew doesn't. And you realize he won. He won. That, that's crazy. So it is one of my favorite episodes, obviously. Uh, in seventh place, in seventh place, is Philadelphia qualifying, or, uh, yeah, Philadelphia qualifying, uh, season eight. Um, this one for me, I think, is, is something that I can really appreciate in the sense, um, that you, you get so much in this episode from the Fantastic Four breaking out in the scene, Daddy Mare, to Ryan Stratus' triumphant battle after soldier, soldier, so, shoulder surgery, to Jeff Britton battling it through the course to keep his mother's streak alive, to Joe Marofsky blowing through the course as a father, to John Alexis Jr., you know, flying through the course, to Anthony DeFranco having his improbable run, as a rookie, you know, and just seeing Michelle Warby make history as joining the Fantastic Four, all of that is just, it's just legendary, it's, it's just stuff of legends in this episode, and so, on top of, I mean, I've been waiting for a year just to see, like, you know, Jeff make his return, because at that time, he was my favorite ninja before, kind of really started loving Drew, but, yeah, I just, it was crazy. It really was crazy to watch and crazy to uh, to understand, and especially even more history with John Luby. It's like it's just fantastic and seeing the debut of the difficult Rolling Thunder. Stuff of legends, I tell you. Stuff of legends in that episode. Um, number six is Atlanta Finals season eight. Atlanta Finals. Um, a great, it was great seeing Travis Rose uh, really break through on that course. Because, like, watching it for the first time, I thought he was done on the clacker. And then him battling through it was amazing. And it, it, was, it, was, it was also great to see how difficult the front half was. It took out, you know, a lot of ninjas in the front half as well uh, to realize that. Um, that was exciting. Um, uh... I love it also because of the course. I think the course is one of the biggest things I love about this episode. It was definitely the course because you have that mix of like easier obstacles, difficult obstacles, but doable obstacles. That perfect mix of quick pace, you know, efficient obstacles, all these obs, all these different types of obstacles that make kind of the perfect course. So I really loved, I really loved that, you know, thrown into the mix. Um, truly, truly do. Um, so yeah, coming in fifth place is Seattle Tacoma qualifying 2019. So, so I'll get to this, but actually, as my as my 10th favorite, I'm actually about to change it up a little bit. My 10th favorite is actually the Atlanta Finals t- Season 11. Because um, I just thought about it in my head as, as I was talking about Atlanta Finals Season 8. Which I still love and still will keep it there. I'm actually going to change, not number 10 place, but number 6 with Atlanta Finals 2019. I'm taking... Atlanta Finals Season 8 off the list. Why I say, why I say that is because Atlanta Finals Season 11 
was everything I was talking about from the course being epic from seeing Drew blast through the course because like I've always wanted Drew always has been talking about him blowing through a city's finals city finals course but I knew ever since his slip up in Miami finals in season six I don't think he would ever be, you know attempt to blow through a city finals course but having safety from a safety pass, I know this is his chance, and he just did it. He finished the course in three minutes, 34 seconds. Legendary. Legendary. Um, from Ryan Stratus, getting that homecoming to Travis Rose, um, bolting his way to his 10th and final time going to Vegas, you know, to Neil Craver's shocking fall, to Kevin Carbone blowing through the course. It's... I loved it. I, I love that it was fast paced, that you can get both the course in quick time. You know, seeing the good spread and seeing every obstacle take out that perfect number where it's like you got five finishers, three fail on the tenth obstacle, one in the ninth. So you get that perfect spread, if you will. And I love it. I love seeing all these runs and great stuff. Stuff that I love and seeing it, you know, just a couple of months ago was amazing and still to this day some of my favorite you know episodes coming in fifth place is seattle tacoma qualifying season 11 oh i love this episode because i love how many great ninjas were shown in this episode from lance Picas to jesse graff to jake murray to megan martin to sean bryan like, I tell you, when I saw the list of ninjas competing in this region, I was flabbergasted. Jeff Britton, Jesse Graff, Sean Bryan, Lance Pekas, Megan Martin, Warren Ball, Nick Hansen, for crying out loud. I mean, again, stuff stuff that's amazing. You know, it's crazy. And still, you got that shocking ratio of Jeff and Austin Gray going out early and Megan Martin. But yet, you know, I'm, you know, uh, triumph of buzzers by Sean Bryan, Jake Murray, Lance Pekas, and even surprising and Jesse Graff, and surprisingly Sandy Zimmerman and Leif Sunningberg breaking through. So that's that best rate, the best possible ratio of tons of ninja legends competing in the course. Some doing shockingly bad, some doing shockingly amazing, some just quite frankly, expectedly doing amazing. And yet still, enough to see a lot of surprising stars, like Sandy Zimmerman, like Leif Sunberg blowing away the course. All that stuff is amazing, and that's why it's my fifth favorite episode. Coming in fourth place is Orlando Finals Season 7. Orlando Finals, again, has always been my, one of my favorite episodes. The Titans of Orlando, James McGrath. Drew Dreschel, Travis Rosen, and Flip Roger Rodriguez, still some of the best to this day. So that was all fantastic. So again, to see them all compete in the same region was exciting as well. Um, uh, not to mention uh, the excitement of um, of a uh, John Alexis Jr. breaking off the scene. Yes, he did have a shocking fall in the city finals. That was exciting, as well as Mill Craver battling it to the very end. See Cannonball, Cannonball Alley. It's difficulty, and yet so many ninjas were still able to break it. And the fight of Flip Rodriguez. The, the surprising stardom of uh, uh, Adam Arnold. So this episode just, for me, personally had it all. And I really, really, really loved it. I really did. I'll be honest. I really did. Coming in third place, Miami or Philadelphia City Finals, season eight. I know what you're thinking. This was the first region to never have a city finals buzzer. Yes, that's true. But for me, on a very personal level, this was the year. This exactly four years ago. This year, because it was the last time they had the. Obviously, Olympus got rescheduled this year, but whoa, whoa, whatever. Um, and I remember, especially how amazing the qualifying episode was, hence it's being it's on the top ten list. 
But because of that, because of seeing how amazing the qualifying episode was, and seeing like we have the Fantastic Four, we have we have um, Jamie Rom, we have all these great ninjas, and so for so long now I've been wanting, uh, or not so long now, but f- in that moment for realizing that they were gonna take a four week, four week hiatus from American Ninja Warrior to show um, the Olympics. So that was just four y- weeks of pure speculation of the results of the editing of the course. And so to see it, and to yes, they had no finishers, but that didn't mean it dis- disappointed me one bit. Seeing the Fantastic Four, seeing Joe, uh, Joe Morosky, Jeff Britt, and Jamie Ron, Najee Richardson. And uh, you know what I noticed about b- the, both the qualifying and the city finals? How stacked this region was, and how stacked it is looking back. Michael Torres came from this region. 